like a wacko that time. That's fine. So I'm we right. are continuing in our Julian route on episode 10. Ten. <gasps> and we are just going to plow forward. If you have not been here before, welcome aboard. You will be dropped in the middle of things. And if you have been here before, thanks so much for joining welcome us. Welcome to the philosophical heavy discussion of the cultural influences and also societal <laughs> backwater bull Also, yeah. discussions of tropes and of cliches and also awarenesses of literary context and breakdown of world building and structure. Also, maybe some dating? Maybe. 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 Some maybe, maybe some dating. dating. All right. Um, the market is cast in red light. Hazy. I never knew all this was down here. My eyes go everywhere at once. <laughs> how did, how did, I became a chameleon for about five seconds. But <laughs> Honestly, I had a chameleon. I loved them very much. They were fantastic. But they have like good they, little karate chop hands. They oh. the best little karate hands. Like, I would approve of Nerd becoming a chameleon. It's fine with me. <laughs> nerd would be a beautiful chameleon. And again, if, if you don't know, our protag's name is Nerd. Yeah, because... And, and they would be the best chameleon. Uh -huh, it's true. <clears throat> I don't know how we get to the market. The, the jump between these No, no, because remember we went to the Coliseum? Remember? Right, so and now then we go us. down the, down the thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay, I got this, I got this. We play other games in between our other games sometimes, so there we are. <laughs> Julian leads me into the smoke, around a bitter argument over the price of a Twilight Dream Frog. Do I know I really... what a Twilight Dream Frog is? No, clearly not. Why else? Why, 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 why does it matter? But we say it's just it background with such authority. What were you going to say? <laughs> or just background detail. Mm. Why would we? But also, at least for me, I actually, one of the things I would love is basically like categorizing all these random drops of things that they keep talking about and going, all right, now let's fit them into the ecosystem. Into the overall, world. Overall and go, where does this go? What do I think this means? Right, let's take the plants in Portia's garden and go, okay, when they're in the wild, what are they like? Uh-huh. Or, you know, the little waving happy flowers in Magaling, ma ma Mazalinka, Mazalinka. Mazalinka's flower box. Like, that she would be like, great. What, was she a dragon something or other? I, can't I don't know. But they, uh, they moved and they were yep. a little bit offended and after I we grab, crawled over them. And grab feats. Mm -hmm. It's pointless trying to make out anything more than silhouettes and glinting flashes of precious metal Aye. and words of people arguing with each other over an object that I know what is. All right? But it is a crowd. As soon as I have the opportunity, I pull Julian out of the frame. Okay, okay, so I appreciate that this is a beautiful underground market, but I will tell you that if you know anything about commerce, there are always people entering and leaving. Any grocery store, any venue, there are uh -huh. people entering and leaving. If the entrance to this is a deserted coliseum, you cannot have bunches of people entering and leaving, and you can't just have them all showing up and all leaving all at once. If it is a bustling market, how are people getting in and out of Without it no one covertly? noticing. Yeah. So the thing is, is, it's like when you enter a fantasy book and they have the castle gates closed. Your castle and your surrounding area was usually the, the main area of commerce and trade and the marketplace. Uh -huh. You had to have people going in and out of there all the time. Yeah. So if you get that trope where it's closed off and there's no entry or exit, you don't have a bustling market interior unless everyone lives there. Yeah, no kidding. There's also actually, depending on your castle, sometimes your castle literally had grounds that extended out around it, and everyone actually had the market inside the castle grounds because you were all a part of the castle. Like, uh -huh. a lot of the old setups for a medieval or, you know, middle-aged, you know, styled castles literally had the castle, mm -hmm. and then you had the wall around the town that was, that was around the, the castle. around the castle. That's the one. You really actually only, I think it's... I don't know where it started, but I feel like it's actually more of a fantasy invention. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong of where they started going. And now the castle is this in independent entity with a wall around it, but its own extensive weird grounds. But nobody has any access to it except it's people. It's the Beauty and the Beast castle, I know. which is not a castle of a healthy functioning kingdom, as you might know by the beast being in isolation there. <sighs> Dragging me into the shadows of Edinburgh. We only just got here. How did everyone else get here? <laughs> Yet covertly. Past your, past, you know, honestly, they probably got behind his cloak and went sneaking along going, ha -ha, No one will notice us past all the starch! It's okay, they all they all came in before sunrise and they've just been hanging out here ever since. They're like, I'm gonna argue over dream frogs and, jo and go in the opium den, it's fine. It's fine, because we got that kind of stereotype, clearly. Alright, <clears throat> it's hard to worry about his safety when his eyebrows are like that. He probably doesn't care, but... When his eyebrows are wait, like wait. that? Wait, are we saying they're like on fleek? Like, honestly, <laughs> when his eyebrows are so good, when his makeup is just divine, I'm also like, I can't really it. see his other eyebrows. So, does that mean like he's whipped around to make fun of us? And we've gone, oh, you have another eyebrow. He has taken his gloved hand and slid it up on his face and pulled his hair back so you could see him. And look he down, at you. And you're like, damn, eyebrows on fleek. Oh, oh, damn. Who's your dresser? Like, <laughs> you. You're supposed to, okay, so I know you looked like you were sitting at the table worrying if I would come and get you, but you, 
You put yourself together this morning, didn't you, boy? He's like, I was prepared to leave. I don't know where, but we were leaving. And I was going to look beautiful for nerd. Ha! Ha! Believe it. Yes. So what I was going to say is, since when have we worried about his safety and him getting spotted? We haven't mentioned this like almost anywhere. You have to read it first. Oh, God. <laughs> You're going to get spotted. Yeah, but we really know. haven't cared since. Like, we keep... Oh, my okay, God. Okay, so the thing is, is I keep having this really strong problem with the writing. And this is a, this is a thing of going, no, this is the character <laughs> they wanted to write for us to play. Like, there's a few amount of choices we can make, but I really feel rather shoehorned into an experience of going, you're going to get spotted. Except we literally have no choice but to let him basically screw around. And it feels very frustrating of going, yeah, but there wouldn't be any conflict. Like, there could be plenty of conflict. He could honestly start to get annoyed with the fact that we as a character, or we as the players in this case, because I don't know what nerd is really like, to be perfectly honest. Since we keep yeah. being shoveled into A or B options. Very right? Binary, binary choices, Very I tell you. binary, which is very strange. For all of the gender allowances they have, in, everything's incredibly binary. It's yes or no. Hmm, anyway, but, yeah, we, yeah, so we like, have only worried about his safety of being spotted, like, a few times in the actual dialogue. And the times that I've been, like, a aggressively terrified of it on screen going this is so uncomfortable that the characters themselves didn't seem to be thinking about it i know and it's really kind of worrisome that's the other thing where still i'm going like he really does just seem to be mostly self-destructive and uh-huh. the fact of where still for me going he is equating so there's too much correlation of like tension and almost going to be getting cut still and then going Let's I, make out. And I'm I like, was gonna say, I was gonna say, I was gonna take this opportunity and go, okay, if I just told him he's about to get spotted, that means he's gonna start hitting on me. Because every time he's in the most danger in one way or another, that's when he goes, sexy times. Which you know what that suggests? Coping. And like, or like dealing with stress. Or escapism. Trying, escapism. That yeah. would say escapism. It's not like, ah, uh, yes, danger makes me so horny. It's like, I want to get out of this and I need endorphins now. Uh-huh. Like, too much too much causation to me, st- like, correlation starting to equal causation to me. <laughs> oh, is that, oh, don't worry. I used to be a regular customer around here. I know, you told us. You used to be a VIP. <laughs> when it comes to medicine, there is always time to waste on gentler treatments. It's yep. true, Sometimes actually. you just have to shove yourself into them and steal their eel bites. Except, you know, what if you had socialized health care? You probably wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. It's okay. They are they are Renaissance medicine. They don't know what they're doing because the past was ignorant. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm you gonna should be just see. I love the eye rolling. It was amazing. Like candles' eyes almost fell out of their head. The, the eye the, rolling. The, the so thing hard. is, is that that's been so frustrating over the years. Like we've gone and we've done a lot of historical. Like we've done done a lot of research, and a lot of anthropologists have pointed out actually that some people really lived actually really good lives because simply they just went, "You need care. We will care for you." And that they also had way more advanced medical treatments than a lot of us have previously admitted, admitted or acknowledged, including uh-huh. C sections being around for a few hundred years. Or longer. Or longer. I like, mean, like, like I think it's it was been longer, a while. actually. It's several because we've hundred had years. Bra- we've had brain surgery, basically, like a, a form of basically brain surgery mm-hmm. around since, you know, when ancient Egyptians, so not current modern day Egyptians. We're talking about the stereotype of ancient Egyptians. They also had cataract surgery. Yeah. Back then as it's wild. Well. Uh-huh. Like, they, they knew more what they were doing around the world. And so there was... There was more than just England and the four humors, what have you. Anyway. No, well, and that's the other thing that I think is very funny about this, too, where it's like, we're going to go extremely English bent. It's like, but the rest of the world probably was looking and going, like, God, you guys are a mess. So, you know what? Colonialism. Like, now, read it. All right, I'm going to read it. You've got to get the most effective stuff you can find. Go on. If you want to get the most effective, you've no, got to you've get got the to most get... effective stuff you can find. Go on. That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> you've got to get the most effective stuff you can find. Underground. Well, I mean, following up with that other sentence, I'd be like, if you want to get the most effective stuff, yeah, you've got to go underground. I... That forbidden leeches, their suck strength is incredible. Is that a tug of war getting them off? Forbidden leeches. What? Uh, forbidden... Is that like a class? Like, what does it do? And then it has okay, like so, plus one so to you have, poison. You have standard leeches, then you have dire leeches, then and then you, you have, have forbidden, forbidden leeches. leeches, and then you have lich leeches. <laughs> lich leeches, known as, as undead leeches. Undead leeches. Oh, infernal oh, that would, leeches. No, no, un- undead leeches would work great because, you know, going after body parts and things, it would work so well thematically. Undead leeches is the next it stage. would, undead, I love I'm it. I'm following the process. All right. I can show you around, and if you're so worried about someone turning me in, well, it's not really on anybody's agenda down here. What's the whole place crawling with guards? And basically everyone's breaking the law down here. One more isn't really The thing is, is that I feel like the palace would already know. If this place is crawling with people anyway, they've already got to know. This is one, So one of the things I think is actually really fascinating is a lot of times they talk about actually historically, there was a lot of basically people who are in charge who would just go, 
eh, we can't really control it effectively. Plus, we actually also use it ourselves. So, so I'm going to throw it to a book series. In the Hunger Games, the black market in District 12 was actually a really good example of how uh -huh. black markets work. The guards know they're there, and they use them too. And as long as it doesn't do anything deeply inappropriate, uh -huh. even the government going, yeah, they're breaking the law here, but it's not really hurting anyone uh -huh. in or this case. Strictly super standing out against Right, exactly, us. based on other things. So um, if you go to, like, DeviantArt, the art website, the uh, moderators will talk about sometimes, they've issued a couple of articles where they talk about people will yell at them going, this thing has slightly inappropriate content, this thing is breaking your stuff, and they're like, we're so busy controlling the really big offenders that that thing can pass until the you know we put the fire out right and so your black market as long as it's not actively hurting one can pass so long as you know we're catching the murderers and we're catching you know the the, the aggressive thieves and vandalizers and things like that right the things that are more in your face right what if there's a bounty on your head except we've already proven that again most people seem to like your dumbass so only half Portia says half straight down the middle there are nine thousand <laughs> people and forty five hundred of them love who him and, you it's know, basically a flip of the coin whether or not you're... <laughs> yeah, just, you know what? As long as only half the people here see me, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, right. This makes his face fall and his eye dart around in trepidation, scanning the smoke. Why does this make him nervous? What? Why? Why? I don't know. It's okay. Like I said, we're about to spark a makeout session. It's fine. <laughs> Is there a bounty on oh, oh my god! Are we gonna come clean? Oh, are we gonna come clean that please. we are actually hunting him? <gasps> Let's tell him. <gasps> not that I've heard, but I'm learning that there is a lot I don't know about the city. Julian bites his lip. Wait, we said that to we ourselves? We did not say that. We just what? stood there and stared what? at him while what? we thought about what? this. What? What? No, we have seen it. We saw the sign. We did. Okay, just because someone's wanted doesn't mean there's a reward offered. We've seen his picture and his name all over town wanted, but that doesn't mean there's a bounty. I bet you there is, because the thing that they mentioned of we're trying to find him so we can set off a masquerade, that in of itself could be considered a, a bounty. bounty. A reward, yeah. Like, so screw that. If you catch that's a him, bounty. that's a bounty. That is a... That is a social reward. You it will is. do a good for all the people, and everyone will get to know you as a temporary hero, and good job, you'll get a good meal well, out of it. We didn't say anything to him. We just stared at him. Like, that you're was literally kidding. just in your head, describing the... Wow. <sighs> Wait, if you're going to worry your sweet little head over it, you could put a smell on, smell on me. <laughs> you could... I put a smell on you. <laughs> I put a smell on you. <laughs> it smelled like... Smoke! <laughs> <laughs> lavender. It's always lavender. Oh, or No, no, or what was his specifically? There was something he said smoky and like something else. Like saffron or myrrh or something like that. There was something, it was an yeah. expensive one. I said, it's a, yeah. One of the expensive. Judas, no. <laughs> Judas, no. <laughs> I have a spell that works surprisingly well and doesn't take too much magic. The never mind me spell. Oh, it's an SCP field. Somebody else's problem. <laughs> okay, if you okay, haven't read Douglas Adams. I'm like, having quite an experience though with this going like you're kidding me. You've had a spell like this the whole time? Okay, so we just started using magic like... The lot, two episodes ago? Two episodes ago. Uh -huh. To disguise him as Astra. And I understand that, that like, you could really have, like... I and we've never it. used it before, but we, we'd seen Astra use it. Have we used this one? Let's find this out. I... I focus my aura into an egg at the top of his head. Crack it on his thick skull. Oh, my God. And let the never mind me run down his face. I'm I, going to put in something about there of how, how you're an idiot and you keep trying to kill yourself. That feel weird. Did you change you into somebody else again? No, you see what I did is I made half the population ignore you, so only the ones who like you will see you. Oh, good! No, you're you. People just won't mind. Hey. Really? Wow, what a useful trick. So when are we going to talk about I'm never also using like, that spell before? Why wouldn't you? I, did, I understand he, he wouldn't know how to do it. But part of me is just like... You would try to learn how to disguise yourself. Dude, you are such a character. You would stand out even if Barney walked by in the set. <laughs> it is, what is it, the, between you and a scarlet elephant and like a, a purple saber-toothed mouse. I believe you in the one in the room would be obvious. Uh -huh. One of these is not like the others. <laughs> anyway, that was an inaccurate quote from the Graveyard Book. Just right. so. You're unusually powerful at this stuff, aren't you, nerd? It's, um... Intimidating. Why would you have any standard for whether or not I was unusually powerful at this? How many especially because you know you've run magic? away from magic. Well, especially since Astra is the other person you know with magic, who's ostensibly better than me since he's my master. All right. Maybe I'll absorb some of your magical touch. I hear it can do wonders for patients. 
I Except mean, for the f- healing's probably great. Like, I mean, if he's showing some character development here, though, and going, like, maybe magical healing wouldn't be a bad thing to incorporate. But I'm also like, do you mm-hmm. just learn it? Is it inherited? What is it? Is it genetic? Is it Harry Potter? You're born is it, with it. Is it genetic and therefore unobtainable? What <laughs> is it like slack craft? And then, you know, you can just be taught it, but everyone pretends like you can't just be taught it. Right? I might be mistaken, but he hasn't seemed interested in magic before. If anything, he's been judgmental. Yeah, he seems very lighthearted today. Wouldn't... He seems very bouncy, like I have a crush. I wouldn't consider him judgmental. I take I take umbrage with okay. that comment, actually. He seems... I think he's, he seemed recalcitrant, and also he seemed, like, unsure. Cautious. Like, yeah, well, that's recalcitrant. Oh, so okay. it's like, uh, it's just like that hesitant, like, pulling back, like, I'm mm-hmm. reluctant. Like, reluctant, just... like I said, like, re- reluctant and distant. And, but, and yeah. uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, but I'm not saying that that's judgmental. Like, he's just like, I just... Put it over there, I'm, f- I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Help. Blinking, I release him back to the flow of near-silent foot traffic. Honestly, he should be more careful. Except for we know that he's not more careful because he's so self-destructive. He doesn't care about himself. Uh-huh. He's angry at himself, and he's angry about the circumstances of his life. And he's strongly self-deprecating. He's even admitted to his self-hatred. Yeah, I know. So yes, maybe he should be more careful, but it's reasonable, based on what we know about him so far, that he isn't. Hmm. Also, we walked him through the entire city to get here without worrying about a disguise. So... Not only now he can Sorry. I'm... I'm sorry, I just... This is again where I'm like, now you care? Wait, what? Now, how did we get him through the city and out of it to the Coliseum without any disguise or worry at all? And now we're like... And he has a bag. We're in a forbidden market where everyone's breaking the rules. You better not be seen. Right? Also, in a lot of cases, actually, some people point out that being in a crowd in a place where everybody knows they're not supposed to be there, there's also a lot of pretending even more so that nobody else is there and keeping yeah. their own business. Because you don't want anyone to know how you're breaking the law versus uh-huh. how everyone else is breaking the law and that you're even there. Uh, yeah. So, um, Jacqueline Kennedy, at one point, actually went to see the movie Deep Throat when it was in theaters. Yes, that's a porn, just so you know. Um, <laughs> it only was in theaters when it first came out, because back then they did the movie road shows and stuff. They didn't have VCRs and things. But the movie had gotten so much attention that she was like, I've got to go see what the heck this is about. And she tried really hard to blend in with the crowd and just be like, don't notice me, because everyone that was going, going like, well, we know it's a porn, so we're trying not to be noticed here. But she was she was too prominent. But it is. like Everybody wants to not be noticed, so they're trying not to notice you either. Yeah, right. Eyes slide over us. Why both of us? Some rove over Julian with interest before that interest fades. The spell is working. Well, I mean, like he's he is tall, tall as a tree. and theatrical, so you it's know. It's very true. Hey, you there! Ever heard of the Scourge of the South? Look, the spirit. The fighter? He spilled more blood up there in the ring than anybody before or after. Oh, so he was a gladiator. A big deal. Oh, what God. is his conversation? A big deal. He was undefeated. You're not from around here, aren't you? The stranger's patience wanes, and Julian lets them shuffle away. But our conversation draws another Hang att- on. attention. Why did you? Why did you just pick somebody at random? And was that at random, or was that somebody that should have known based on your experience with the market before? I'm... Also, if they're a walking salesperson, you know, with somebody with with a where they can just walk away I am... and are just carrying locusts or like a locust tray, like a popcorn. I am tray. legitimately baffled as to why mm. that conversation started. What was the point of that? We need to cause drama, so now's the time to cause drama. Or like, why didn't, well, he's not really good at communicating with us. So there could be a solid level of going, I'm not going to ask you before we actually look for information. I'll just try and be directly helpful immediately. Right. But I don't know why he would pick that person, especially if he's familiar with people down here. Let's find out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But our conversation draws another's attention. Yeah. He was an executioner. His matches always ended the same. People get bored of watching him win, eh? Tough crowd. People wanted him taken out. Everyone wanted to see that guy fall. Why? So we're looking for an executioner. You think your master's trying to say something? Your master? What? I... What, what are we going off about? I feel like I either I don't remember lost. something or... Just kidding. I'm sure there's another reason he told you to find a guy called the Scourge. Oh, he's oh! talking to us suddenly, oh, not the other guy. Oh, lordy! No, no, no. Okay, so the Scourge is... Remember, so Astra told us to go to that place and go find the Scourge No, the I knew South? that. I, I knew... forgot that. Oh, I knew what he was asking about. I didn't know he, how he picked that person. So, so you were lost for a different reason. Feel free to punch me in the eye. It's okay. No, You're fine. <laughs> I'm not going to... You don't You do not do it. I just don't punch your friends. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I was going to say, but that segue from... Switching from I'm talking to this other person to suddenly I'm talking to you, like I could not tell at all how he was suddenly talking to Nerd. Yeah, no, no, that's where I got confused. Like, that's fine. I'm sure your master, I'm like, why would you talk to them about their master? Right? All right. I told you to find a guy, guy called, called the Scourge. Scourge. Yep. It's true. Something catches his eye, and Julian catches me by the crook of my elbow. 
Wait a minute. Why are we here? I follow his eager swerve toward a shadowy entrance with a creaking sign overhead hung by two rusty meat hooks. Oof. Ouch. I do like I... this atmospheric, like, visual. Like, it's very pretty. Yeah, it looks really It nice. also gives this idea of, like, hazy, foggy, where I get where I came up with Opium Den. Right. A jagged dagger. I imagine you know the place? <clears throat> There's snarling inside, and a crash. A glass eyeball rolls out of the doorway before our feet. I. Fascinating. Hi. Who am I? They knocked the eye right out of him! <gasps> a salty sea dog stumbles out after. Pops the misty marble back into his socket and gives us a poisonous sneer. Okay, guys, guys, if your eyeball or anything else falls onto the ground, don't put it back into your mucous membranes before you clean it. Just not a good idea. Like, serious eye infection possibilities, like, like eye cavity infections are possible. Before heading right back inside, Julian is clearly intrigued. So does well, he know this place or not? Like, what's his, what, what? This is my kind of place! What do you say? I bet you there are some funds of the scourge in there. Lynn, have you actually been down here before? Did yes. you used to be a card-carrying member? Like, is this a new place that was built or established since you last were here? Help me out, boy. I, like, I feel a little lost. You've been looking a little grey since you cast that spell on my face. You think I need a drink, don't you? I got <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, everybody in this whole entire world, we all we do is just drink alcohol every day and day in and day out. But the thing was, is like we mentioned before, you know, a lot of the alcohol used to have a lot more food basically in it. So you were consuming calories. Be the fermentation process got the bacteria out of it because water is not safe. In oh, God, water, water was super not safe. Right. I'll get you a drink, maybe a bite to eat. And besides, besides, I got up early and came to see you, so I haven't eaten anything. I just can't pass on a chance to get rowdy. Really? Why, I mean, he does what? seem very playful. Get rowdy, no thanks. What? I, well, this time this might be a premium option where we don't make out with him. Because it's getting rowdy in a group of people. I... I'm curious. Are you curious? Hi, you be there? I don't... They say I... that the premium options don't affect the game. Of the little we've heard about the game, they say it doesn't affect your, like, your, your actual outcome. It's just bonus. Uh -huh. Which seems really weird because I would want it to, but on the other hand, I guess it's friendly because... If you don't pay for it, there's nothing you've missed as far as, like, choices, as far as, like, like end story goes, which sounds weird. It's just a little aside in the flowchart. Oh, sure. All right, let's get, get ready. ready. He, he faints. Does he paint? What? what? I, like, okay, swooning, as far as I know, is, like, nearly losing consciousness or completely fainting away. All right, now I need to go check it. So I, I really... I Hang on, keep going. <laughs> oh, wow, that place looks empty as hell. I thought those were spider webs at first. Faint from extreme emotion. Yeah, yeah it's fainting. swooning is Does fainting. He pass out? So he passes Official out. Official Webster dictionary is swooning. There's was... no alternate definition. I was always like, there isn't anything. I'm else. like, I've read it before. About... When I they swoon, two. you bring the smelling salts. Yeah, I'm like, excuse me? So he fainted, then got up immediately from his own excitement. Like, I was so excited, I passed out, and then I woke up again. <laughs> Yes! I know where all the blood was. <laughs> oh, God. That was the <laughs> premium content, was watching him swoon? I... And then... Time to pass out! Goodbye! <laughs> like, the premium content is, he passes out on the ground, we climb over him, and shove smelling salts up his nose. He wakes up retching and coughing. Come on, let's go get Rowdy! Yay! Woo! Huh. Hey. Just a quiet... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And thick. Right. You can cut it with a knife. What? Did I have time to identify it with silver? Good job, me. Hi. Push. Are the tables the size of a horse? The groans the size of the horse? Or the tankards? I'm guessing the table, since it <laughs> follows after tables. But also, I'm going the size of a horse. Are we talking like height wise? Are you How tall are your tor are your horses? Are we talking like 15 hands high? I was high? Say, a table. hands high. It was a table. 18 hands high. That's what it was, my dear. All right, okay. something that finally fits me. <laughs> you can stand at it with your shoulders at the height of the bar. Poor nerd, underneath it. <laughs> nerd standing underneath the table. Wow, they keep it really clean under here. I would have been really pretty dust or something for the rain. I like boogers. Oh. So many boogers. <laughs> yeah, never mind. There's a lot of boogers. I, I thought those were okay, just snack types. Okay, so I'm gonna get gross for two seconds. No. But God, I had the worst experience at a job that no. I worked at, where this entire back part of this like chair was covered in snot because people had just kept picking their nose in the house, and it was so it was it was a it was a resale place, <laughs> and it was so gross. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs>
<laughs> not if everything's being smashed. Okay, so I get the lively, rowdy experience, but if they're smashing everything, that's not really economically sustainable. Uh -huh. Unless they're like, that's part of it, or you pay, you pay like a ruckus fee. Right. Everyone can just pay the Richmond's fee of replacing all of the stuff they destroy. Uh-huh. Which, that, that's a thing. All right. I... I it'll be like, a whole tuna. I think it'll be a getting into the corner where I don't feel like anything will get smashed into my head. <laughs> Please, I'm be. too short for this. I... He died. Okay, okay, he just goes, like, completely stiff and prone, like like the coyote and, like, the Bugs Bunny cartoons or whatever. Planking exists I in the Arcana yes. universe! Planking. Oh my god! I... Ah. God, I'll pass. I... If I pass out here, I cannot do what I I'm supposed to do. I love the fact that, honestly, between the two of us, so you are the one who's drank so much less alcohol compared to me. Oh, it's true. <laughs> and you're just like, I don't get it. And I I'm do. like, I get it. <laughs> I don't. So I but haven't. Also sounds terrible. I haven't drank that much in my life. On the other hand, every time I have drank, it's never done anything to me well, or for me. You so tend to like, go, eh. it tastes like butt way more it aggressively does. than I think I've ever seen like, anybody else. so <laughs> bad. Alcohol tastes like, like nastiness. Uh -huh. I would tend to say I'll pass. On the other hand, if we went, no, let's tear it up. Maybe we're just going, you know what? Fuck me up. I'll have what she's having. What do you I think? would just say I'll pass. Because we're supposed to be on business. Oh, well, and also the other thing is, too, is, is that as much as I'd be like, sure, we can come here, we can do this thing. It's like we're not a killjoy. You're going, I'm joining you in your activity, but one of us has got to stay sober or we're screwed. Or we can't figure out what we need to figure out. And in case you didn't know, you're under investigation for murder by me, who's not an investigator, but that's cool. But I'm also not telling you this <laughs> either, but, you know. I still want it to be one of those grand reveals of finally we admit that we've been tracking him the whole damn time. And it's like a test of faith. Right? You know, like, I feel like that would be really powerful. But I also uh, feel like it would be really cheap. It would be extremely cheap. Because well, also, we just keep refusing to do it. And we never got the opportunity to do it yeah. earlier. Like, if it had been a theme where it was an option to come clean now, to tell him that you've been sent after him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. But I feel like that that was the first nod to it, of going, just thinking to ourselves, well, I haven't seen a bounty, but, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, because we went, let's go get <clears> Howdy. <throat> well, I just don't want to swoon as well. I could drink something, just not that. Yeah. Aren't, aren't we supposed? Aren't we supposed to be asking? About like the you scourge? can ask about getting rowdy, but also going. We went to go in here, and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna go in there so we can find out about the scourge." It seems like there'd be fans here. Now he's whining, going, "But no booze." But what won't you just do? chill out and be happy? Well, he is trying to get us to hang out with him, so that's that's yeah, what he knows how to do. That's not what we came to do. Okay, I know. However, I get it, I flirting get it. conventions usually go. Okay, I might have dated more than scandal has. You might have drunk more, but I might have dated more. Going, I mean, I avoided bars for a very strong reason. It's fine. Anyway, conventionally <laughs> is a way to say, I am interested in you. Let's get casual together, okay? So Hello. Doing that. Bartender. Can so watch me go up to him. I bet you it's the bartender. <laughs> so when I go to order a drink, you know what'll happen? I ask him about the scourge. And then I'll be able to move the plot forward. I mean, to my pants. I mean, <laughs> the pants off. I mean, the barkeep. The barkeep. I told you, I was right. <laughs> like, I freaked out. Like, legitimately, I stopped him and see, I already wrote it. Oh, yeah. I already wrote it. I put it in there, it's fine. My head is extremely pretty. <laughs> <laughs> was I grasping him? Was I <laughs> holding him somewhere? Panic! I stood him up from his swoon, <laughs> and then I glued let myself let to let him go. side. And I just stood there going, yeah, let's party, and by that I mean let me hide in your cloak and I'll stare out with huge eyes. Hey, nerd, though, you're right. You kind of remind me of, my, like, my third cousin that's about this big. Yeah, and I kind of, sort of, I don't know, it's not deep, but it's adorable, but that's not exactly what I was expecting. I just don't really think of you as being a toddler hanging on my leg, so you know. Hey, If you're going to be plastered to me, so it might, it might, I might think, of, well, it might not go the same. I, hang on. <laughs> I'm suddenly Ooh. afraid of everyone and everything. What if I lose my glass eye? Just so you know, we don't have a glass eye. I do. Except for they, they aren't really paying attention to me, and none of them should be paying attention to Julian, so, you know, we should be fine. Yeah, we're good. It's fine. <gasps> are we going to be able to stand tall for ourselves? They are that short. Or my beard is really that long. His beard, or he's just passed out on the ground, and we were just sort of shuffling backwards, and we stepped out <laughs> his beard, almost walking into his face. Uh-huh. The biggest and meanest of them all has a bigger and meaner one. Do you know what biggest means? <laughs> the biggest and meanest of the whole place. So, 
We, we ran into 100%, and then we sat on 110%, which means that that's actually 100%. And the other one's 90%. So, or hundred, or like we're not 95. playing the rule of Crash Bandicoot here. We are literally doing 100%. It's okay. And by the way, if anybody tries to tell you that extra credit is actually something that gives you extra, it's really bullcrap. It's honestly just that becomes the new 100%. It does. It and becomes it, the new reference to the A. It's fine. It's anyway, fine. so someone even bigger and meaner. So why aren't we describing this guy's luxurious, beautiful beard that's been hanging like, down sir, seven feet sir. from his chin? Like because them. if he's taller than Julian, he's the biggest and taller there as far as we can tell uh -huh. and his beard reaches the floor and he's standing over us that is a sight i want described excuse be like me beautiful. also a lot of people actually really do heavily take care of their beards like them it's true to get them that long you really have to tough as cuffs burn i just sit there on this person frozen in their lap ha no i hopped out of it good ha! are they gonna get into a fight why i okay so what happened to the one whose beard i was standing on and then there's this other one how the hell do you know what a woodwind instrument is? My he homie? could be totally educated. You have no idea. He could have been in band Beautifully, like, arranged. Actually, this character looks fabulous. He could. He could be, like, nine feet tall and look disgustingly he... beautiful. Oh, sorry. They. Toughest customer could be gigantic, brilliant, and we're just so intimidated and so dark and murky in here, we can't even tell. They could sparkle magnificently out in the sun and be like, I am more kempt than any of you because no one will touch me, which is my privilege. All right? He's asking for you it. You really are. Yep. The toughest customer. He had. A, they had a name. The morning he bleeding. I was expecting something in my ears, though. I want you to do it again. Actually, you know. Okay, so I have to tell you this. I hate. I love how fantasy loves going over this. It's really easy to knock somebody out by beating him in the head. Like people, don't, especially if he just swooned anyway. So, but like he's but like. If he knocked him in the head and he landed on the floor, like, odds are, like, a one-punch knockout is really common in your layman fighting. That's why you protect your head. Like, uh -huh. if you watch any amount of boxing or fighting at all, they you're wanting to protect your head. Because that is the part you will just knock out instantly. It's amazing how oh fast people hit the ground. Wasn't everybody already raising 30 Hells of Excitement and already having tussles and scuffles? I thought this was already rowdy. Yeah, like, huh? So this is a new tussle and scuffle in the middle of the other ones. What happened to our spell so that people wouldn't notice him? How did this happen? If our spell didn't wear off and we're not getting tired this from it... This is why I said I how... didn't want to do this, because I'm like, I feel like this is just going to get dumb, but... As I say, then how is this guy noticing him and continuing to maintain focus on him? Like, we need to have said our spell dropped, or there was some kavit to it or something, because if he is under our spell of don't notice me, how is this How is this guy continuing to maintain focus on him? That's fine. Does he know that's the right person? Ow. Everyone, ow. Oh. Oh. He just cleaned himself up. Like, he's like, while you're pulling that knife out, let me stand up, wash my face, that's put right myself back face. together. And I'm gonna what? blush at you. Like, that is the blushy, sensual face going, did you get it out of your system? I stabbed you. It was hot as hell. Are you sure I he's love not, like, does watching I... you pull the knife out of you. It makes me hot. I'm also like, are you sure, like, in any way then he's, like, he seems to be masochistic in the sense of wanting to destroy himself, but he might be sadistic in the sense of going, I'm enjoying fucking you up when you don't realize what's happening. Yeah. Well, Maybe that's the thing he doesn't like about himself. I don't think himself. he's actually masochistic, um, in the sense that I don't think he oh, enjoys he, well, so pain. Oh, no, yeah, I mean, that is, that is actually... I don't think he draws any enjoyment from it. So masochism is actually drawing enjoyment from like, self-deprecation, from humiliation, from harming yourself. He does those things, but he does not seem to enjoy it. Or, or like, enjoying somebody else hurting him. Like, I don't... Yeah, I, I don't think he enjoys... I think he feels like he deserves it, but I don't think he actually gets pleasure from it. However, this is a weird facial and like structural cue to i'm watching someone pull a knife out of their side does that arouse him does that make him blushy like because i had assumed that was more like an interesting i'm aroused face yeah like usually the blush <clears throat> the blush so far has been indicating like yeah like you know flirty or sexy times anyway or like, yeah well, at or least like the lip more, is more or being more vulnerable at least how is that? Anyway. No, no, it was a lip bitey with the blush, but right, I'm just like, right. the lip biting thing in particular tends to be, at least for him, seems to be co the, the code. The way he flirts is by shoving a knife into your side, and then as you pull it out, that's the, the height of the eroticism. He just hasn't really gotten into us yet. Uh, what am I no, doing with you? 
The eel bite did it for him. That was the start. That's it. Oh, he I've did. got it. Head cannon. He is into blood. Yeah, it seems to be. Before I freaking pass out, because how my head hurts. Sir, what did you find out from the bartender you went and talked to? I know! Sorry, I'm annoyed. Believe it or not, I was trying. I don't believe you. Now you're blushing. I again. was trying to help. You're straining your magic muscles, and I just did wait. I can't stand it. I... So you pick a fight. Like, I understand that. He, okay, the thing is, is that he doesn't know what he's doing, but he keeps making, like, ridiculous, hasty decisions that are bothering the crap out of me. Like, we just promised him with his sister, going, We're here to help you. We'll work on this together. On the other hand, he has shown that he makes hasty decisions on his own, uh -huh. and that he generally is an island and doesn't consult other people first. Which I As suppose... well as being self destructive. This is in line with his character, I feel. And also, the thing is, is you can have basically where I can promise, but I can. it'll still take me time to work out uh -huh. to it because I'm so used to performing my destructive behaviors. Now, I don't know why we turned into a useless pinata suddenly, and also, again, he's like, you're straining your magical muscles. Why? Because the spell suddenly stopped working and I couldn't tell? Hey. I, I Also, we don't know. Hey, Diva. I need to be useful. Oh, he's feeling like we're doing all the work. He's trying to help. So the thing is, is I feel like that was actually the end of the paid premium scene, if I just had to guess that offhandedly. That whole thing was it. Wow. So that also wild. then meant that that was completely useless? That didn't do anything? So like, now I mean, it was do? useless. We know that. We're basically playing for extra stuff that doesn't matter. But that I... That was a little weird. I I don't know what that was supposed to indicate, then, if that was a paid premium scene going just teach us more about how impulsive he is? I think so. Maybe that I was just know. a character exposition thing. It's, it's bothering him to sit on the sidelines while I do all the legwork. Did I get that right? Yeah, okay. that's what we got out of it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You don't need to be useful. I'll find some use for you. I... He doesn't have to be useful. I would tend to say, inherently, he doesn't need to be useful, and it's not our job to find use for him. He needs to find his own value in use, oh, right. would be my argument. Yeah, in the like... same way that we didn't say, oh no, we're going to be immune to pain, I would tend to say, it's not required for someone to be useful to be valuable, and it's also not my job to give him use. I know, I'm like, that's a level of, like, way too much control that bothers me. You don't need to be useful. I don't follow. I'm saying you have worth to me other than, than random acts, acts of, of usefulness. usefulness. That's actually okay. a big thing. Okay, so socially speaking, I think that's one of the things I've noticed in a lot of people. I myself have actually been very guilty of it at times, of going, like, I cannot stand to just sit here and listen to people cry or scream or whatever else. And I've actually had one or two people throw it at me going, well, you just needed help and whatever else. And I'm like, I just wanted to talk to you. I didn't want you to try to help me and then make it, it worse because you wouldn't listen to me to begin with. Or you wouldn't let me just have my feelings and my process. You're like, we need to fix it right now. Right. And I've been very guilty of going, what do I contribute to this? What do I do for you? And then right. I need a quantifiable, what's the service I provide you as a friend? Because if I don't know, I don't know what my value to you is, which makes me uncomfortable. And I've, right. been, I've been working on that. You you, you also, though, had a really crappy relationship that, that went with that. But, you know. I may have had that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> You've lost me. That's okay. If no one else has ever told you you have inherent worth just for existing, then you know what? Let this be the first. It's okay. I'm only... I, but you are not nerd. I am totally nerd. Keep Zip going. it. You are second I'm nerd. I'm also nerd. <laughs> you are also nerd. You're we, dark. We are nerd together. <gasps> um, I'm only doing all this... Be wait, because I like you? Because yeah, I because you like you. Because I like you. I care I feel about like that's you. A weird, yeah, I was going to say, I feel like because I care about... Okay, it's fine. Yeah, it works. It just feels a little casual to me. It's fine. I'm only doing all this because I like you. Okay, well, that's sweet of you. i touched. Well, here is some news for you, little face. <laughs> I'm only doing all of this because I like you too. You mean you're considering not turning yourself in and dying for me? <gasps> How sweet, I'm so flattered. You're, you're, allowing, allowing, you're allowing us to actually investigate this, actually, so, so, so that could be really powerful. Go ahead. No, no, so what I was going to say, actually, so there's one thing that people go, and you need to find your own internal value. Actually finding an external motivator sometimes can be helpful to get through the initial stages of your process. So, but if you ever retain that and keep using that as a crutch and going, but I only this external thing, only this external thing, you are going to go nowhere. You need more work after that. So in a limited situation when you're very, very low, finding an external motivation just to get through it, like support through a situation, the if you can't make your your own serotonin, store-bought is fine. Right. This kind of thing. Someone actually once said um, on a post that I read online, it was really beautiful, where they said, sometimes if you feel like there's nothing else to do and there's no way to go on, you can trick yourself with something small. You can be like, well, if I kill myself now, I won't see the next Transformers movie. 
And even though that seems very, very superficial, it can be what it takes to get you through the day. Right. And one step at a time, you can try <clears throat> to attach yourself to larger things that you care about. Yeah. So that can be really good. So yeah. if he does this because he likes us, that is a motivation he was not able to latch on to before. And as long as he doesn't continue that with the purpose for his whole life, right? then that's fine. Being able to then go on and define himself as his own person. In now, more ways. Now, the, the one thing also I will say, too, is that for some people of going, yeah, I'm doing this because I like you, you really also got to watch that, again, of just going only because you like someone. Which then you can be like then well, because you, as you long bring as something you don't want it to be a transactional, transactional relationship. Yeah, right? you like, don't want mm. them to be earning something from you. Well, I'm only doing this to buy you your time. I'm putting, I'm putting a dollar twenty five cup of coffee down payment on you dating me. Oh, I hate these things. <clears throat> we skulk around the market for a while and didn't have much luck. I don't don't have much luck. Nobody has seen the scourge in. So why did forever. he really go up there? He was talking. He didn't bartender. actually talk to the He bartender, didn't because we got it. We interrupted it too fast. Uh -huh. Like, that's very I silly. I think we got in trouble too fast. I think that was probably just all the premium scene. Otherwise, you pass and you don't walk in. I'm like fine. I said, I don't... Other than teaching us how impulsive and self-destructive he is, in another framework other than basically... <clears throat> other than sex, I don't mm. know what that was for. Yeah, I don't know. We're almost all the way around the market when we get desperate and to th and think of alternatives. Well, it's good. At least we finally thought of alternatives before we barreled in. But again, I guess for us, we don't really have access to this place. So it was like, whoa, we thought we might actually have something because all your alternatives are literally all the people there. Yeah. And, you know? if, and if neither of you are, are good at, you know, trying to seek out intel, which is a skill, then, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if we can get you something that related to the scattered, you might be able to find it with that. Oh, we're going to do a magic finding spell. We are. We finally have more spells. Magic really is something. You're like a hound dog. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. <clears throat> crying all the time. Psst. Hey, you. Asking around about the scourge of the South, huh? Sounds like you're my kind of robe. We might be. What do you have to offer? Only the finest and second-hand memories. And I'm not talking third or fourth hand. Holy crap. I'm saying these are straight from the source. Seen them with my own eyes. You can see them too, for a price. So I really have to say that clearly, you know, what is it, legilomancy has gone, has really gone up in the world. Has just, has just, yes. It's catapulted. <laughs> Whoosh. It's <laughs> extremely If thing. it's money you want, I'm not cheap. Yeah, because see, I picked the voice perfectly. Uh -huh. I get it, I get it. Oh, here I was, trying to make a friend of the infamous Death Doctor. I was going to give you a discount. Ah, uh, well, you can name me a price after we have a look at these memories of yours. Hey, he finally has two seconds of going, I mildly know how to deal. Yeah, as I say, for like, a second. He's competent and shady for two seconds. Woo! I'm like, that doesn't make any sense, though. I'm also like, that's that's adorable. I, he I, does, though. I think he deflects with flirting. I think really who he is is whenever he gets uncomfortable or he wants to put someone off or intimidate them, he flirts. Uh -huh. Which I find, personally for me, to be somewhat relatable and also somewhat accessible of going mm -hmm. like, I've done that. You've been, you're, you're the funny kid in class, right? You're yeah. going, I'm hilarious. People, I can be funny and I can deflect you and also I can basically not show you how terrified I am or uncomfortable uh -huh. I am or whatever else. And like, basically what I can do is I can redirect your attention, but also, like with funny kids, it sort of invites people in or makes them, you know, not take you seriously. But with someone who flirts or is sexually aggressive, it tends to make them go, oh, you're the bad guy. Honestly, I don't like that trope. The fact I that, don't either. Like, I've actually been having a weird, slow awareness kind of thing that bothers me. Julian is coded as the bad boy, not necessarily the overall actual bad guy of the story, because we clearly don't know exactly what's going on here, but you're coding sex and sexuality and even potentially, like, self-destruction and hate with being the bad boy well and he really is he's tying them together every time he's being really basically well, trying not to chase him, you the off, writers that's well, what the, writer, the writers so I say, but it seems like behaviorally every time he's trying to chase you off or every time he's trying to show how bad he is he just blatant sexuality i will flirt with you really aggressively and then if you respond to it instead of back off he gets uncomfortable because you're supposed to get taken aback by it right we're led into a space the size of a closet it smells swampy and there's a hole in the wall. Just one. Just look into the memory hole and all will be revealed. I'm afraid. It's a glory hole. <laughs> oh, God. The dealer slides dusty partitions over us and shuffles around outside. I hear a, ah! hack <laughs> I hear a hacking cough. What's that smell? 
Aromatherapy. It helps the magic work. Julian gives me a look as if to ask if that's true. I give him a half shrug, half nod, before the tiny space goes dark. Are we gonna watch a, a show? It's a, oh, did we get in the red light district? <laughs> like, I just like, I, Go red, light, the red light district. Red light comes from the hole. We squeeze in close and watch the vision that plays before our eyes. Ooh, Ooh cutscene? Cutscene? A heaving, panicked figure collapses to the sand, crushed under a weighty boot as the scourge raises his axe. Aww, his hair is a mess. Your scum scourge! Boo! No. Boo! Lucio's nasal voice, oh sorry, Lucio's nasal voice echoes to the Colosseum over the sound of the well-worn blade dragging across the sand. Who amongst us is booing my merciless champion? Do it louder! Boo! Boo! Yes! Make it feel really bad about it! Now, carry out your dark duty, Scourge! Or I shall I remind you of you and your owner's debt? <sighs> Poor baby. Oh, it is Muriel. It is Muriel. Dang. I say, I recognized him right away. I there. did too, but I didn't see it fast enough because you clicked through it oh, so sorry. quickly. That's fine. He's doing indentured servitude. That's what that is. Stealing, stealing his gaze, the scourge heaves the axe over his head and brings it down. Oh no. So I was right. He is the Winter Soldier. He is. He's oh Bucky. my god, I called it! <gasps> So we don't Who's know Bucky? anything about this game. It really was the first, like, when we met Muriel, I was just like, he got, like, once you saw his eyes without his hood on, I'm like, he looks like Sebastian Stan. He's got a big, huge puppy Google eyes. eyes. Yep. He looks like, he's, he's, <sighs> he's, he is? He's Sebastian I'm Stan. like, he's the Winter Soldier. He's under coercion to kill people, and he's really damn good at it. How did this happen? All I right. When we are returned to the present, I feel as if I just saw something not meant for eyes to see. Memories of the Scourge are really hard to come by. This is the only one you're going to find where you can make out his face. Kind of. Where you can kind of make out his face. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Want to know... Director, it's okay. I support you. <laughs> Want to know why? Because I have this! The memory dealer flips a knife out of nowhere. Julian goes stiff as a rod. What have I told you this is the Scourge's personal blade? How many ill-fated necks have split upon it? Obviously it's one of a kind, but for you, I'm willing to part with it. What do you think, nerd? I, I, I would immediately be like our character, raise his hand. I've already seen them, it's fine. Be like, actually I know who that is, but... I should be able to find him from the traces of the places that I know he's been and his scent in front of my shop as well as in the market. But honestly, I could probably cast a spell on it without buying it from him, so we should be fine anyway. Yeah, you'll be good. Bye! You'll be okay. Bye. Thanks. That was really uncomfortable. And by the way, that was a lot of abuse. And I am uncomfortable with abuse, so I would like to go hide the corner for a little while now. But by the way, down with monarchy. Yes. <laughs> I eye the knife spinning on the end of the dealer's pointed golden, golden nail. Are they, like, holding it by a keychain on their nail? Oh, they are so extra. I like Lily. So extra. Deal or no deal? Oh! I... Ah! I don't know how much money we have or how much it costs, and I don't think we need it. I think it doesn't freaking matter. I don't think we need the damn knife. I don't think so. We already... We've already seen this damn dude. Like, screw you. I'll say, part of me wants to buy it so we can get it away from them and they can stop doing this to people, but at the same time, I don't feel like that's as... That... That's gonna be a point we'd ever get to interact with. Right? I'm also like, bull crap, you would be willing to give away something that, that's almost this, that, that. I feel like that's a setup. I feel like it's, yeah, I feel like it's a scam. I'm gonna say no deal. No deal. Aw, oh, that's what I was hoping to uh... hear. There's no fooling you. Even the most casual of fans. I was about to say, hey, I had to. I say, he doesn't like knives. He uses a, he was dragging a freaking axe on behind him. Uh huh. I would know that Scourge didn't favor knives, but this. The dealer whips out a gray-brown sheaf of seal skin. It looks nondescript, but it has a strong, musty smell. I would offer no casual fan the Scourge's loincloth. Oh, ew. God, ew. I'm sorry, I just want to raise my hand. Ew. <laughs> I, ew. 
Ew. I mean, it doesn't have to be dirty, but imagine, like, splattered with the blood and sweat of a thousand foes, not to mention your own. Also, so I'm gonna say for here, going, like, what I feel like they're doing is going, it's the gladiatorial arena! They were all slaves! Okay, they actually weren't. Gladiators were incredibly well-respected. It was considered to be a career job, at least in ancient Rome. I understand this is a different to... world, but still. Say, we're gonna have to get it, get, get going, though, because no, we no. are, we are in, like, no, no, time. No, okay. no, that is easy find. Yeah, it'd be like if someone was selling your cloak later. It's like somebody selling Starch your underwear. still intact. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. Think of all the victims who bore witness to its unfathomable contents. Are you saying all the victims saw his junk? Is that what that line is? What? To it, his unfathomable junk. Unfathomable, unfathomable junk. Okay, head actual canon based on this person's exaggerations. Muriel has unfathomable genitals. <laughs> what happened is that you stare into the void. And the void gets a boner? <laughs> Maybe? We don't know how he's buying it. I don't know. I mean, you could call it a boner either way. I don't know, right? Um, Willand a bit. He's still got his imprint. Nerd, how about it? The dealer flutters the loincloth for me. Lu, 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 lu. It's surprisingly short. What? Well, I... What? We have to choose again? Oh, Now God. we're actually starting to ask way more freaking questions or get more... Uh, this is so... I don't know. I, should we just take it so we can be done with the damn dealer? Like, I don't even know. I'd be like, you're full of crap. No way. I don't think so. I don't know. No deal. All right, all right. Keepsakes of this caliber are not meant for the unappreciative... But not even the most discerning thing. I feel like this is all a bunch of crap. So the thing is, that actually, that was it seems surprisingly short. So it's not long enough to actually cover him. Yeah, I think they're trying to give us cues. Uh -huh. Like, it's not the right size. Also, seal skin? He looked very fluffy and thick on there. Like, like, but also, like, is this a puzzle? This is the first time we've encountered a puzzle in this whole game. I know! I'm just like, you're full of it. <clears throat> Since I like you both so much, this is a one-time like... offer. Just for you. All right, so particular... It's a boar bristle brush. The dealer offers it to me to peruse, changing their honeyed tone to a hushed one. This was his. Genuine article. You can still see the hairs. Hi. do we have a deal? I don't even know. Oh, oh, we can, we're going to hey! check it. We're actually going to, like, vet this one. Yes. Yes, I was Thank like, God. I need some more help because I wasn't aware that we were doing anything like that Puzzles, at all. Yeah. Like the other. I close my eyes. I can imagine the steady sound of thick hair pulling slowly through the bristles. If I hold it close to my face, I can imagine looking out through this curtain of an inky mane as trumpets blare. Deal. Good. Finally, someone who sees the value of such a treasure. This was the only personal item of the Scourge's dressing room. I should know. I took it myself. And how much for this invaluable treasure? That didn't get to see his unfathomable... Unfathomable guy. How much do you got? Julian sighs and dumps his coin purse out on the table. That's a lot of pirate gold. The dealer is croaking wearily at the... Weekly. Croaking weakly, like, thank you, at the clinking pile long enough for us to find the ladder back upstairs. Why would you show them exactly how much- Okay, you are terrible at making deals. First you're great at being sort of sly and whatever else, and then going, here, just have all the money you want. Okay, so one, he could have been doing like a power move there, just flexing. Two, he could have a ton more money back where that came from. That's fair. And also, if it's like, if he was worried about whether or not other people would take his currency, he could just be like, I'll dump it out and dazzle you, and before you think about whether or not you want it in that exchange from that country, you know, right. I'm out of here. Yep. I oh, oh, God. Hey, hey, this isn't real pirate money. The gold scratches right off. Biting his lip, <laughs> Julian hustles me up the ladder and out of the market. See, flexing, told you. We All also right, just job. stole from the damn vendor who tried to swindle us twice, but that yeah. doesn't mean that they don't deserve a livelihood. Uh, no, not at all. Nah, just, and also those as two. soon as we slammed the trap door behind us, no one else needed to enter or uh, exit this market the entire time or any other time. No, no, no. All is quiet except for Julian's ragged chuckle. I raise a brow, and Good the vendor could job. not follow us up the ladder because, you know, no one else can go in or out of here, otherwise it will seem like too much traffic and be suspicious. Right? Fake money? Yeah. But it was a stiff to me. Who would have thought? He didn't even know it was fake money. That's oh even better. Okay, that's even better. He's he not even I'm clever. 
You're not clever. I'm like, you seem not clever. No That's power great. move. Oh, still not clever. Accidental power move. Yes. But he rolled a 20. It's fine. <laughs> it's why he rolled a great 20. We dust ourselves off and Julian helps me to my feet with a roguish smile. Where to now, boss? What does the boar bristle brush say? I feel like we should stop here, even though it's not a chapter. I feel like we're at time. I, all right, fine. I don't know, do you want to go? Because, I mean, it's easy enough to start here again. Uh, we, can, we can stop, it's fine. Okay. So, all right, well, so this has been Scandal. And I have been Lies. And, and it, it was great playing, playing with you. you. Bye!